My dear friends, both the lessons of today's liturgy of the Eucharist are so interesting. I love the first reading of St. Paul. I like St. Paul very much. Though I'm not St. Paul, though our height may be the same, you know. <laughs> but St. Paul is such a wonderful character. He speaks about his challenges, his missionary pain. And he says, probably comparing to the other apostles, I have suffered the most. And he gives the detailed accounts, isn't it? How many times he was shipwrecked, how many scourges, how many times he was in prison, adrift of the show day and night. So detailed account of his persecution. And finally, he summarizes the entire journey, entire pain. He says, if I am to boast then, let me boast of my own feebleness, of my own weakness. For he knew very well in his weakness, God is his strength. I think we all suffer one way or other. Probably we will never get a chance to suffer like St. Paul unless you go to India and to Africa. But the church is suffering silently, physically, openly. And today we can see what's happening in Manipur in India. Christianity is tortured. That's the pain. That's the, that's the total persecution and the pain St. Paul addresses in today's wedding. And yesterday our Prime Minister Narendra Modi was addressing the Congress houses in the States. And he's boasting, he's boasting about India, the diversity, and the various religion. And he says, sort it, not the right words, not to quote him, but in this line he says, we live peacefully. And there's huge applause in the Congress where we are challenged, faith is challenged. And today in this Mass, we pray. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for those missionaries who, like St. Paul, are torn apart, are destroyed literally, and still rely on God to be their strength. But the beauty of today's uh, liturgy, I will highlight, is today's gospel, today's gospel of Matthew. And it starts, Jesus telling his disciples, he says, Do not store up treasures for yourself on earth. Why? Where moth and rust consume. Now there, on that version, is moth and rust consume. But over here I can say, moths and wood worms, the worms can destroy that. Now I don't know where you keep your treasures. I'm sure all of you have some treasures, isn't it? Probably in bank or in the cupboards at home or somewhere underground. But Jesus is telling something very challenging for all of us. He says, now guys, listen. Don't treasure this. Don't, don't keep it holding. All this will be destroyed by these moths and woodworms and all these things. He's not against riches, no. He's not against, against those having money, no. He's against losing the balance. The last line of the first verse, that is, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That is very, very important. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, I love this miracle of St. Anthony. You might have heard it time and again, but let me uh, break open to you once again. 
Saint Anthony did so many miracles, and one of the miracles he did was he was called to preach. He was a fantastic preacher of God's word, so he was called to preach for a funeral mass of a rich man who died of that village. A rich man, sort of a bit of miser, was not very charitable towards others. Probably hoarding up riches for himself. But because he was rich, they called the top priest, the, the top preacher, Saint Anthony. And so the body of the saint, uh, of, of this rich man, is just in front of the altar. And St. Anthony is preaching from the pulpit. He says, you see this man lying in this coffin? In his body, there's no heart. There's no heart. And the people are astonished. They're surprised. They say, what this man is saying. He says, well, if you doubt, you can open his body and check whether his body contains his heart. And so those people open his body and try to find his heart. The body did not have a heart. And St. Anthony said, well, his heart is in his house, in a cupboard, where he stored his treasure, his jewels, his gold, his silver. And those people ran to his house, opened the cupboard, opened the treasure, and there they found his heart near the treasure pumping. It speaks everything, right? Your heart is where your treasure is. Now for a moment, just put your hand over the chest and check whether your hearts are in your body. Okay, yeah? Hope they're not in your banks. I mean, this gospel is so practical, isn't it? We fail to find the real treasure. And when we see our young people, our, our children, sometimes our parents and ourselves, what is our treasure? What, what, what Jesus is reminding his disciples? He's telling us the focal point is the Eucharist. This is the treasure. And this we see in the entire journey in the New Testament. Zacchaeus, the tax collector, was hoarding up riches, isn't it? Taking extra taxes. And still he was not happy. Until Jesus said to him, come down. Come down. I will show you where is the real treasure. And Zacchaeus came down. Come, let Jesus, let's have a meal together. He found the treasure. Mary of Magdala, oh, what a life she had probably. And entering the sign, the house of Simon the Pharisee, she falls at the feet of Jesus Christ, wiping his feet with her hair. A call for repentance and for herself, that is the treasure that Jesus a change, the precious treasure she founds. And the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, who was trying to find treasures through different men, could not find the joy within until Jesus quenched her thirst. And she said, yes, now I believe you are the Messiah, you are the prophet, you are the one to come, you are the treasure. And then she runs to the village. I found the Messiah. 
Well, in our lifetime also, we have the wonderful example of St. Francis Xavier who was trying to capture the world, capture the world, until he found Jesus through Ignatius of Loyola. We have Francis of Assisi, give up everything, the wealth, everything away to follow Jesus, the real treasure. And so, my dear friends, today, we need to discover what is the real treasure. I mean, this is a challenging question for all of us, and especially for young people today. Do they realize what's the real treasure? So probably it's, it all starts with a small toddlers nowadays, not even able to hold a phone in their hands, but beautifully they do like that, isn't it? They browse, little as the small chair. And they think, I have found the real treasure. I have found the entertainment. And mothers say, you have it. Don't disturb me. Let me cook. And as they grow a, bit, a little higher in their age, you know, we give them a bigger thing. The pad, isn't it? The, the iPad and whatever it is. And growing a bit bigger, they want something called the apple, isn't it? Not the eating apple, but all these gadgets. And definitely, immediately, in that youthfulness, probably the moment they get a chance to work, unfortunately, they embrace this work only to get some money to have a own vehicle. And nothing can stop them now. And so, unfortunately, the society is diverting away from the different tragedies. Here is a gospel that we are all called to pray for ourselves and our children that they may find the real treasure. I only pray, I only wonder if they really understand every mass is a real treasure. If you really try to find this mass, search this mass, search the holy sacrifice of the altar, the Eucharist, there's nothing beyond this mass. This mass is a real heart of God where he pours his blood to wash away our sins. This mass is a good Friday of forgiveness. This mass is a joy of thankfulness and do this in my memory. All of us need to discover the Holy Eucharist. All of us need to discover our real treasure. It is an uphill task for all of us, whether we are parents, grandparents, children, young people, youth. But unless we discover, discover Jesus, fight, challenge, and build a relationship with Jesus Christ, the saints, those people from the gospel, they found Christ. And today as you partake in this retreat, we pray for all of you, and especially for the young church, our young people, our youth, that all of us may find the real treasure. The real treasure that God gives us, our prayer life, our faith, the Eucharist, God. For we all know for this faith, for this mass, there's no moth can destroy that. Nothing can destroy that. Now, if you consider your faith as a treasure, no one can rob that from you. Because your heart will be there. You will be there. God's grace will pour in your heart. Let us bring our praise to the altar. Bring for all of us.